welcome to David Kane Uncensored. Who on earth is David Kane? Some of you will be saying. Please stick around to find out. This is a brand new vlog that is going out live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube every single week. So let's start as I mean to go on. It is uncensored after all. Ladies and gentlemen, I plan on taking my own life in three months' time. Now, if this picture could talk, that is what it would say to you. That was then, this is now. I've experienced suicide and I'm here to tell the tale. But that photograph, if it came alive and it said those words to you, would you stick around? Would you maybe add in the comments words of comfort trying to dissuade me? Of course you would, because you're human beings. You have a heart. You have that level of emotional intelligence. You'd want to make a difference, wouldn't you? But the bottom line is, at this moment in time in the UK, we think we're doing a good job in mental health. I would question that. And I question that because the statistics are still not good reading. Suicide rates are dormant. Stress, work-related stress is going up and through the roof. We have the COVID generation that is going to be a tsunami on the emergency services that already can't cope. And yet we believe that we're making a difference. Well, I think we can do better. And that's what this Uncensored series is all about. These are just two of my clients. It's they and clients like them that have inspired me to do this series. Why? Because they tell me that what I say and what I do around mental health is very different to what is in the mainstream media and what they've experienced in the past. They've told me that I should be more vocal, that I should be doing more of what I'm going to do during this series, and I'm happy to take up that challenge. We've got to get away from stupid strap lines that, quite frankly, don't cut the mustard. We've got to change our entire approach to one of prevention, not solution. We are where we are, and yes, we need to deal with that, but we need to plow all of our resources and energy into stopping that tsunami that's coming from arriving on our shores. We can do that by thinking differently. We can make a difference through prevention, through connection, and I'm going to be sharing with you how we're going to do that. This is not for everybody. This is not going to be for employers, for example, who are quite happy to talk a good game to do traditional methods of well-being strategies, but are not willing to take the band-aid off and go to those places that they fear to go. I'm talking to people who want to make mental health in the workplace a profit center, not a cost center. A profit in terms of bottom line and customer satisfaction, but more importantly, a workforce that know what it is to have good mental health, that practice good mental health, not only at home, but are allowed to do so in the workplace and that we in the workplace can have kind of strategies, suitable strategies, suitable ways of working, a company handbook that is fit for purpose for these colleagues so that they can thrive in the workplace. It's going to be one hell of a journey. It starts next week. Some of you are going to agree with me. Some of you are going to disagree with me. But one thing's for certain, it's going to be memorable. So join me next week for vlog number two, not to be missed. I wonder what we're going to be talking about. Well, we're going to be talking about something that I get thrown at me when I approach new clients for well-being provision. Something that they say is a part of their well-being strategy. Well, I'm going to prove to you and to them that it's not. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.